I get complimented by men. And they love your beard. They love my beard. I yeah. get texts saying, "Show you're a lucky woman." If I had him, and I'm you, like, oh, we yeah, also we get did. lots of callers saying how they feel the other way about me as well. Yeah, and they're they're not ladies; they're men as well. Yeah. So basically, men love us. I tell you one that <laughs> so I thought. I, I tell you one that I thought was really cool. <laughs> I've been a big a big fan of Om Puri, oh, yes. and I remember we did an interview with him recently for his new film with Dame Helen Mirren, um, The Hundred Foot Journey, and. Uh, that particular time we interviewed him over the phone and at the end of the interview he just said um, I really want to tell you that you have a lovely voice and he said that in Punjabi and he said it in Punjabi he goes um, he said Kunya, did he, did he, did he Punjabi what? Boss Sonia, Sonia. Yeah, did he, yeah. no he said did he have ours did he have ours did he have Punjabi yeah. yeah and then he said he liked my voice and I was like oh so that's sweet. Really cool. oh, that's really but I think the strangest caller that we've had um, has been someone who's come on on the phone and although they know that we're husband and wife and we've been together 11 years has proposed to Sonny on air what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> I was well flagged. I was like, thanks man. And I just said, anytime you want to come and take him, you can take him. <laughs> so any ladies, uh, hello. He's reaching He's, out. Yeah, I'm reaching out. Help. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we proceed, it's something that's been part of our lives for the last four and a half years. And, and as anyone knows, even if you're a professional, even George Clooney, to get his projects off the ground, he's a massive A-list star. To get his projects off the ground, he has to go and make a big blockbuster, get his money, and then try to find interest into the films that he's interested in, like The Quiet American, for example. Um, so, someone like me and Shay are thinking, you know what? We haven't got a chance. Got a chance to <laughs> but then yeah. I'm the kind of person who goes, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care if we haven't got a chance. Let's just go and do it because it's fun. And you know, tomorrow, we left something behind and our kids go, our parents are on crack. Crazy. Right? Crazy These guys parents. should stop smoking that shit. <laughs> right? You so can't I, say that. I can't say that, can I? I can't, Start sorry, again. I apologise, I don't do smoke. I don't smoke, I don't take drugs, I don't condone it in any way, shape or form. I would like to eat sugar and chocolate. Yeah. I'm just saying that as a disclaimer, right? And if anyone finds me doing any of that stuff, I would like you to prove me wrong. Okay, so uh, as a result, so uh, as we proceed, is, uh, is, a, is a sitcom developed for TV, but on YouTube, these are little clippets mm -hmm. of what you will see potentially on TV. Yeah. So it was like a showreel. Mm -hmm. And it was never made, I think, to attract big numbers of followers or YouTube views because we only wanted about 10% of the media world to see it, i.e. people like Warner Brothers, people like Universal, BBC, and just mm -hmm. show to them this is what we can do with minimum money. And at this point, I would like to say thank you to Bulldog for sponsoring the whole entire season mm -hmm. one and two. Uh, season two is coming shortly, but at the moment we're still promoting season one. And and we are in talks, but can we what? say who we're talking to? We can't well, really. No, but I was going to say that you know, with our with us as we proceed, it was really fun, and you know, there's people that we have to thank. Um, Humble poet, he's a very good friend of ours, and he really supported us. Thank you. Um. And and also Superwoman, who a lot of you. I'm sure we'll know of. She was, you know, very kind to give us um, some of the insider tips that, you know, Sonny and I, coming from the radio world and being presented Thanks with, you. exactly, may not necessarily be familiar with. Uh, people like Mad Tata Films, Tandy, who was, you know, uh, part of the journey complete from the beginning of concept right through to filming with Sonny. Um, and then, you know, Sonny's parents. I, I never realised filming can be so stressful, but also you need a good team around you. Um, can we also mention at this point as well, um, who? The guy who did the music. Charles Bosco. Thank you, yeah, Charles. Exactly. There's like so many people who've been involved. So the idea for it to just stay in YouTube would be amazing because uh, you know people around the world get to see it. The fact that we're sat in LA and we're doing an interview about something that we filmed in our home in London is surreal enough for me. Yeah. You know, uh, we are literally on the other side of the world talking about this, which is amazing. But we can't deny the fact that we would love to see this on TV. And mm -hmm. as Sunny said, it's. Um, something that we've 
started filming originally for. So fingers crossed, and if it happens, I promise you guys will know first. And you know what, this TV thing is so long because you have to have so many conversations. And, and who knows, in about five years it'll happen, but uh, you know, we know we're here for the waiting game because there's nothing else going on. Yeah. So we're chilling, man. So Stop we're in no rush, man. And if it, if it comes up before that, someone's pulling some strings somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so would you consider any reality shows like other Southeast Asians have done? Like, would you go on Big Brother or something? Yeah. Or? So we, um, so the one thing I guess I should explain is the documentary that we did, it was a fly in the wall documentary. And literally, if you've seen something like Big Brother, you'll know they have the small cameras, the size of a tennis ball, which they put in the four corners of the bed in the room and they leave you to it. <laughs> um, so that for us was very surreal. But doing a reality TV show is very different to doing a documentary. A reality TV show is when you are a character don't get it twisted, you're a character. You know, it's scripted, um, and if it's not scripted, like in, in, in London they have scripted shows, if it's just somewhere where they put you in Celebrity Big Brother or Big Brother and you just have tasks to do. It's I'd, entertainment. It's entertainment. So if we were gonna do it, I'd love to do it with Sonny because I just think it'd be crazy and you guys could see how crazy he really is. I'm gonna just sit there and um, Never Say Never is the one thing that I've learned yeah. from this whole journey. Uh, I don't know if people would, Okay, I don't know if people would want to watch us, but then again, when we saw the first episode of The Family, I stopped watching. we were sat there laughing, because you know when you, you see yourself on TV, you're like, oh my God. And then we just, at the end of the first episode, we sat there thinking, why is anyone gonna watch what this? Watch this, yeah, all we're, doing, video. all we're doing is having cups of tea, yep. and shouting at each other, and Dad's talking, trying to get, you know, cool exercise, to and, Yeah, and it's like, why would anyone want to watch this? And you know, we were surprised, nearly nine and a half million views, and now it's gone across the world, places Australia, have seen it, Dubai, and you think, okay, so you just don't know what people are watching. Yeah. So, never seen it. Oh, quite good. But if I was in Big Brother, I would want to do all the tasks against him. So I, I think prove our, as how, we proceed is better. Like rubbish he is. Yeah, as we proceed is better. Just watch that. Just watch. So, um, the one thing that's really important to say is um, when I, I moved out home because there was a big disagreement with my mum and I, uh, I was very, very lucky. You know, you hear about stories where unfortunately girls are forced into marriage, you know, it can be extreme to the point where they're locked up or even killed, you know, that did not happen in my case. So that's really important to say. However, uh, for anyone who saw the family, they will know that um, there were some very difficult times with my mum's family. And uh, I was very lucky that Sonny's parents embraced me. And at the time that we were approached to the family, we, we had a lot of cousins saying to us, why are you doing this? And we, our initial response was, why wouldn't we do it? It would be fun. But also, it was that point that you just made. Uh, when you watch Bollywood films, they always show the worst thing. And, you know, life is over. If you leave your family, life is over. And, and I really wanted to show the other side. And they always show how you have the bad in-laws, you know, who are going to make you cook and clean. And, you know, they're, they're never going to talk to you. They're going to force you to do these negative things. And I remember my friends always used to meet Sonny's parents and be like, they're amazing, you know, and I wanted people to see that. Look, girls, your life is not over when you get married. Like, that's so important to say. And there are amazing in-laws out there. Having an in-law is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. You know, I believe I have two parents. I have my biological mum and dad, my mum and dad. Like, we all have mums and dad. And then I have Sonny's mum and dad. So I just see that as a benefit. And I think uh, that was something that really came out of the show, was the fact that I've moved into a family and I'm a part of that family. I'm not an add-on. I'm not somebody, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not perceived to be the daughter-in-law from hell. And in the same way, they're not perceived to be the in-laws from hell. So I think that was really nice. And I think that's the message I would give to any woman, is don't approach wedding. Like, I meet so many women who will say, Oh, you know, I'm getting married, my life's over. Well, why is it over? You know, you need to know why you're going into a relationship. And as long as no one can break that relationship between you and your husband, then nothing external will affect that. And go into, you know, go into your in-laws knowing that they're going to be a part of your lives, perhaps even more so than your own family. And, I, and on that point, I would like to say everyone's individual. Why are you well. whispering? Am I whispering? Yeah. Am I whispering? Yeah. Okay, sorry. And on that point, <laughs> I would like to say, uh, everyone is individual and everyone's scenario isn't as yeah. soft and there's a lot of compromise that needs to be made on both parties. Shay had to compromise quite a bit. Yeah. And so did my parents and my brother and my dad uh, so that we all adjusted to the new person in the house. If you get a goldfish, that needs some looking after as well. 
or the one's going to die. So mm-hmm. just imagine if it's a human being with, you know, the same intellect as yourselves, compromise is the mm-hmm. key here. And I think um, anything can work, but even then, best laid plans and all that, be willing to move out on good terms. Mm-hmm. If you have to move out, you exactly. can't live in different. Yeah. Because, you know, what might work for us might not work for someone else. So uh, true. And my mum and my dad, they're just like our best mates. Yeah. And, um, and also it's one thing, it's really interesting. Like I've heard this quite a lot of times where people always say, in fact, I was at a wedding where um, somebody said, well, she's get it, she's moving into our house. You can't expect five people to change for her. She has to change for us. That is so idiotic and stupid. It's unbelievable. You know, a daughter-in-law should not be seen as someone who's going to come in and has to adjust to everything. No, she's a part of the family. You all need to adjust to each other. Yeah. Just like when you have a child, you know, and you become parents, you will, you both will adjust. It's a two-way thing. So as much as you expect this person to come into your life and, you know, change the way that she is, you need to understand the fact that she's come from a different world, a different family, and she's going to feel different. She's going to wake up in the morning and look at the ceiling and be like, this isn't my bedroom. And then slowly she will wake up one day and look at the ceiling and feel, this is my bedroom, this is my home. But that can only happen, as Sunny said, with compromise. So yeah. as much as I adjusted to Sunny's parents and their their ways, they adjusted to my craziness and my falling down the stairs and Just me wanting to hug them and they don't really hug and me will saying, I don't care, I'm going to hug you anyway. You know, it's kind of, it really is a two-way thing. Yeah. So for any in-laws or potential in-laws out there, if you have this whole thought process of she has to change for us, you're already losing in my opinion. It's about we all have to grow together and whether that means you're living together or you're not living together is actually, it just shouldn't matter. Your relationship, you're still going to be together. Yeah. Compromise, man. So... Hold on. (laughs) Don't come out with the romantic rubbish. Just turn the truth why we had to do the eight. Why? Because it's, okay. it's not point nine. Okay, so basically, we were talking about earlier on, you know, the fact that we live, I live with my in-laws. I have actually been with my in-laws uh, this month, 11 years, okay? Uh, I did move out to university. However, they were still part of my life when I went to university. It's really important to be a part of that family, but this is going to be shocking to hear. It's also very important to be selfish. And when I talk about being selfish, I'm talking about the relationship. So, you know, if you saw the family, like Sonny's constantly moaning, Sonny will be upstairs and I'm chilling downstairs with his parents half the time. He, I see his parents more than he sees his parents. You know, I love spending time with them, whereas Sonny just wants to sit and watch his cartoons all day. Um, so as part of that, when you're living in a, in a family, your, your priorities change, but you really need to put your relationship first. So the, the whole idea of us going out every eight is that we know on the eighth we are going to make that effort. Even if we haven't. For the so rest I, knew, of the I knew you'd have come. Um, but also, <laughs> but also, is so everyone else knows. Sunny's family know on the eighth. They won't, you know, they won't make plans because they know that once a month, they know on the eighth, we have our plans. Yeah. And that's not being disrespectful. That's them saying, okay, cool, they're taking time. So out why don't you tell them why we started the eighth? Well, that was living together. But you can say why we started it. Right. You started it. Yeah. All right. So the eighth of every month is a review. It's like a promise of review. If you're at a job, you're gonna see where you are with these people's and see if you want to stick every, around. Every job has an appraisal so this is our system appraisal. and this is our monthly appraisal yes, where yes. I get to mouth off at him at how and bad he's been that. and how much ironing I've had to do and, and at the fact that he hasn't even listened to me, mine. all of that kind of stuff. See, now that's why I was trying to make that point, but she's obviously talking over me. That's fine, okay, <laughs> because this is part of the review that I'm going to mention on the 8th, which is in about a couple of days from now. So what happens on the 8th is that we go out with these things that annoyed us in the month. And that's the first thing that we do, get that out of the way. And then we know we've got an evening, even if we've upset each other to the maximum, we spent so much money on cinema tickets or theatre tickets or just going to a concert or have a meal ready, we'd be so angry, but we have to still spend that evening together. Yeah. By the end of it, we know why we're together because yeah. you know we still like each other's yeah. company. So it's more like a pro- performance review. Yeah. That's what the eighth was. It wasn't date night. It wasn't romantic. It wasn't... I need more space with my husband. None of that rubbish. It was for me. It was straightforward, fix up. Look sharp. Look sharp, (laughs) right? Otherwise, I out here, man. Yeah. And uh, you know, you. But it's really nice because you know, you know, like Sunny, Sunny's very sweet. You ask the question, how do you keep things fresh? Look, we've been together eleven years. Eleven years going on, you know, eleven hundred years. You know, it's a long time. Um, and 
it's, it is a long time, you know, for anyone. And we're very touch wood, you know, fortunate because we've seen relationships that have got together. Unfortunately, they don't last. And when we assess why we have managed to last is because above and beyond anything else, we've Just always be honest, said, man. yeah, we've always said we're friends first. You know, soulmates, lovers, everything's secondary to that. Because if you're if you're a friend to someone, you will be honest about how you feel, right? If you're a husband, if you put the title of husband and wife or girlfriend and boyfriend or boyfriend and boyfriend, whatever, you sometimes feel pressure to live up to that, whatever that may be in your mind. If you're just two individuals, you know, for us, we are bestest of friends first, um, then we feel that we can be honest with each other. And yeah, definitely in the eighth, we will have that out. Um, but then we will go for a walk in the park or go to see a movie together. When was the last time you walked in a park? Well, we walked me. in Windsor. I drove the car along the side. Yeah, he drove. He, he doesn't I like hate it. walking around. So, so, so it was the 8th when I proposed to Shay. And it was on the 8th that we got engaged. And it was the 8th that we got married. And purely because the 8th of August is the date that I will not forget ever. <laughs> So we made sure everything fell on, on the, the 8th of August. So yeah. we got engaged on the 8th of August and we got married on the 8th of August. Yeah. And, uh, we did our registry, registry on the 8th as well. Yeah. And, and, you know, Sunny asked me out on the 8th, on the 8th of, August. of August. And 8 is, you know, Chinese call it very lucky very number. Very lucky it's, number. It's been fortunately very lucky for us. So, and he's a lazy person. If you have one date, guys, then you'll never forget. Never forget. Mm -hmm. just, just keep to simplicity, <laughs> man. And uh, you might be thinking, you, know, you ain't got rings on. What's that love got to do with anything? Rings, uh, they might fall off. The jobs that we could do, we have to move them around or what have you. Yeah. So we've got tattoos. Yeah. So this but tattoo... I'm, I would so not get his name yeah, on Yeah, and I don't want her I name like... on mine. She might change it by default and I'm going to be stuck there with it. Yeah, and I was or, like, we may not, knows, we may not last together. forever. And then I've got yeah. his name all over my arm. So yeah, it's yeah, a symbol. It's, it's a, symbol a symbol of our, of our initials, initials in Punjabi. Punjabi. Yeah. So that's basically there to, as a reminder of there was a time and there is a time that we had spent together with this person who was amazing and it was Pretty much my whole bloody life. Yeah, it was, like, you chose me. I was just there for the ride. <laughs>